What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Infamous Ghost Money, and in this video, we're going to be talking about SIM swap fraud. We're going to look into what SIM swap fraud is, how it's pulled off, as well as some things you could do to defend against it. So, as always, if you find value in the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to add some quality financial content to your YouTube timeline and stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. All right, let's get right into the information. According to a press release from the FBI on February 8, 2022, from January 2018 to December 2020, the FBI Internet Crime Complaint Center received 320 complaints related to SIM swapping incidents with adjusted losses of approximately $12 million. Fast forward to 2021, the IC3 received 1,611 SIM swapping complaints with adjusted losses of more than $68 million. SIM swap fraud has been on a crazy uptrend in the past couple of years, and I believe this is because scammers know how important our mobile devices have become in our everyday lives. From accessing our sensitive passwords saved on the cloud to making purchases with just a tap, our cell phones have become a key part to our virtual identities. So with that being said, what the heck is SIM swap fraud? Put simply, SIM swap fraud is when fraudsters are able to transfer an individual's phone service from the device that it should be on to a device that's in control of the fraudster, causing all phone calls and text messages to be redirected to this new device. The reason scammers do SIM swap fraud is because it allows them to get past two-factor authentication, since the one-time passwords needed to access many of these online accounts could be sent via a text message. So once a scammer has access to this information, they can easily do password changes and attempts to access your bank and crypto accounts, social media profiles, and your email accounts. And all while these lovely fraudsters are having their way with your personal information and money, you will have no clue since your phone will have no service. As it stands today, there are several ways for a fraudster to pull off a SIM swap scheme. One of the most popular methods is by leveraging good old fashioned social engineering and taking the time to research the individual they are attempting to steal from. This could be accomplished using public sources to gather basic and easy to find information on the victims they are targeting, such as their phone number and provider, home address, email addresses, and date of birth. Also, let's not forget the dark web which is filled with tons of the personal information needed to pull off a SIM swap. Once enough information is gathered, they would then proceed to contact the phone provider posing as the victim and create a story such as they lost their phone or it was stolen and they need to have their phone number transferred to a different device. The challenge fraudsters face with taking this route is, if the individual they are attempting to SIM swap has a PIN or a security question set on their account, they must also have this information available for the swap to go through. Frosters will usually attempt to gain this information through phishing or impersonating the phone provider and calling the individual in an attempt to trick them into giving up the information. I've also read up on situations where frosters are lucky enough to be connected to an inexperienced rep over the phone who doesn't follow the correct procedures. Or the frost is just able to convince the rep with a story as to why they do not have this information. Cause let's be real, it's extremely common for people to forget their pins and security answers. So I'd have to assume these providers leave room for swaps to still go through without the required information for these type situations. With that being said though, if a fraudster's social engineering game is tight enough, within a couple of minutes, the phone number will be transferred just like that. Another method that's becoming very popular is recruiting individuals who are employed by these phone providers, also known as insiders, innies, or plugs. These employees are usually sourced by frosters online and are bribed into assisting them with the swaps or they could be a staple in the entire operation. Many of these innies offer their swapping services online through the dark web, telegram, and other underground networks for prices ranging from $500 to $2,000 which is a small investment when you consider how much access a successful SIM swap gives a fraudster. And despite how amazingly easy it is for these phone providers to track employee activity, these foolish employees who get involved in SIM swapping clearly don't know or don't care about the penalties. Once an any is locked in, nearly all security procedures phone providers put in place to defend against SIM swaps can be avoided making the entire process a breeze for the fraudster. 
Now after a fraudster successfully pulls off a SIM swap, it becomes a race to see what they could get away with before the owner of the account realized their phone service has been transferred. And this time could vary depending on what time the swap was pulled off as well as how often the victim checks their phone. Also, if their phone is connected to Wi-Fi, they'll still receive notifications and alerts giving them the impression that it's all good when in reality they're getting robbed without having a clue. Based on my research, the first thing fraudsters will attempt to access is email accounts of the victim since the passwords on these accounts can be reset through text message two-factor authentication. Once they are in, they will proceed to switch up the contact information and secondary emails associated with the account making it harder for the true owner to catch on to the account takeover. From this point, they'll review the email account searching for bank accounts, crypto accounts, social media profiles, sensitive employee information, and of course, personal information. Most SIM swappers will primarily target crypto accounts since it transfers quickly and working in cryptocurrency makes it easier for fraudsters to cover their traces. And there have been several cases involving crews getting away with tons of cash through SIM swapping and hacking crypto accounts. Such as between December 2017 and May 2018, members of the hacking group known as The Community, whose ages range from teenagers to mid-20s, engaged in a SIM swapping scheme in which they stole millions in cryptocurrency from victims across the country. According to the criminal complaint, several members of the conspiracy were phone service provider employees and assisted members of the community as innies in stealing the identities of subscribers in exchange for bribes. The community was highly organized and communicated via Discord, Telegram, and encrypted messages, and these ruthless fraudsters would hack their victims then taunt them online after they got done with them. In 2018, one of their victims was Michael Turpin, who was one of the bigger names in the crypto community, who they successfully sim swapped and stole $24 million worth of cryptocurrency from within minutes. Sheesh! Bank accounts are also easy target thanks to Zelle transfers and by having access to the swap device, it'll allow the fraudsters to bypass bank two-factor authentication as well. So I'm sure by this point you have a pretty solid idea just how violated you could be if you are successfully sim swapped, it's just a matter of how much time the fraudster has. So this is why sim swapping crews work together and will have multiple people working the profile simultaneously in order to maximize their potential output. All of this could go down within 30 minutes to an hour so these fraudsters make sure they are prepared to fully attack once they are successful with a sim swap. And even after a victim is able to regain control of their service, in several of the cases I've reviewed, victims have been extorted through blackmail of having their information and their personal naughty pictures exposed to the victim's contacts. With all this chaos occurring around mobile phone takeovers, the FCC has gotten involved and is demanding mobile service providers put stronger measures in place to defend against SIM swap fraud. But with as common as text messaging two-factor authentication has become, fraudsters are taking full advantage while providers are trying to figure it out. So when it comes to defending yourself against SIM swap fraud, some simple things you could do include setting up a PIN and security questions on your account that must be entered before any changes are made. You can also request with your provider to remove the ability for a SIM swap to be done over the phone and if possible, require for all changes to be done in person after your ID is verified. Make sure you contact your provider directly to find out which options they have available for their customers to defend against SIM swapping. Of course, none of these processes are 100% because as I mentioned earlier, when you consider insiders, it's pretty much free game. So I also recommend setting up an alternative to text-based two-factor authentication, such as Google Authenticator, or a similar type two-factor authentication app since most email accounts and crypto accounts are compatible with these type services and it's probably one of the best ways you could defend against an account takeover. But with that being said, that's the video on SIM swap fraud. Leave a comment below and let me know if you or anyone you know have ever been impacted from a SIM swap scam before. As always, I hope you found some value in the video. If you did, remember to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel to keep catching more of my content on financial fraud and stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. Aight, peace.